Chapter 24, Rescue. The Emporium's decay was speeding up. The cracks in the walls grew and chunks of stone began to break away. The once shining black bricks seemed dull and lifeless. Lamps had flickered out and could not be relit. Doors began to lock without explanation. A strange illness was beginning to strike the staff. They became weak and fevered. Daniel felt it too. His connection with the shop was fading. There were frightening moments when he found himself lost and confused, only for the knowledge to return. Several times, Sharp left the Emporium at night, complaining that he needed to eat, though Daniel had never seen anything pass his lips, except whiskey. When Sharp was gone, Daniel found himself hoping that he wouldn't come back. The uneasy feeling in his gut was getting stronger, and the more time he spent with the magician, the more positively Daniel felt he was hiding something. One night, when Sharp was out, Daniel checked in on his friends. Caleb was revelling in his role as organiser. Every day he'd been sending out groups of vendors and performers to the increasingly dangerous far reaches of the Emporium. There were phantom sightings and false alarms, but no Mr Silver, and no Ellie. We've discovered a long lost part of the Emporium, Caleb told Daniel. A secret tunnel. It will take days to properly search it, and Ellie has gone with the expedition. They won't find him, said Daniel. And he told Caleb about his attempt to write in the book and the door that almost ate him. So you think Silver is alive, said Caleb. That's great news. Maybe, said Daniel. But why doesn't he want anyone to find him? What's he doing? What is he so scared of? We sh should call off the search party, said Caleb. Agreed, said Daniel. And the thought that Ellie would finally be coming back cheered him. He missed her. He missed how she made him happy and angry and want to tear his hair out all the time and he had been terrified that something would happen to her that she'd be caught in one of the crumbling wonders as it self-destructed he hoped she'd be able to help him work out what was going on and just having her around would make him less nervous about spending time with sharp daniel heard the screams for help on monday on a monday morning he followed the noise up and around and found a corridor half caved in blocked by fallen chunks of roof and wall the muffled rings shattering glass spilled from a warp twisted door near the blockage the screams grew louder and more desperate daniel ran to the door and tried to open it but it was bent and jammed he kicked at the handle again and again until the last door burst burst open revealing a palace made entirely of glass it was beautiful it was delicate and shimmering and it was falling apart everywhere the glass was marked by crawling inching cracks the sound of glass popping and shattering was all around. As Daniel followed the screams, long shards fell inches from him, exploding on the floor in countless sparkling fragments. He pressed onward, dodging and weaving until he ducked under a doorway, entering a grand dining room. His heart almost stopped. Anya was lying over a glass table. Her eyes were shut. A pool of black liquid like ink had formed around her and was dripping from the table to the floor. Stuck deep in her shoulder was a glass blade as long as Daniel's arm. Anya, Anya, I'm here, it's Daniel, can you hear me? She didn't move, didn't acknowledge him in any way. Daniel struggled to drape her over his shoulder. Then he began to pull her away, limp feet dragging on the floor as the dining room crashed down around them. Out into the main hall and he gathered pace, but white hot pain flashed in his foot and he dropped to the ground, Anya landing awkwardly on top of him. Daniel knew his foot was bleeding. He could feel the hot blood pouring from the wound. He also knew if he didn't get Anya out, they'd both be stuck many times over with razor-sharp glass. As the shattering roar became unbearable, he struggled up and dragged Anya through the door, jamming it shut behind. Help! Somebody help! Daniel! Vindictive Sharp sped towards them, blue eyes almost glowing in the dim light. Mr Sharp, you've got to help her! Oh, she can't die! Please don't let her die! Sharp brushed Daniel aside, crouched low over Anya. He felt her throat. She's alive. Daniel slumped to the floor in relief. Sharp pulled the glass shard from Anya's shoulder and a jet of black spurted high into the air. Then Sharp's eyes closed and he muttered under his breath. His fingers traced in the outline of the deep gash. The pouring liquid slowed. Then it stopped. Torn skin began to knit together until nothing remained of the thinnest but the thinnest scars. Sharp turned his attention to Daniel. This will hurt. Close your eyes. Daniel sat by the fire, sipping hot tea to steady his nerves as he waited for Sharp to return. When the big man swept through the curtain from the labyrinth of corridors, Daniel leapt up. 
What happened? Will Anya be okay? Sharp removed his coat, hung it near the door and took a silver flask from the pocket, swallowing a mouthful of the liquid inside. She should recover, but even then there's every chance she'll catch the sickness that's spreading through the staff. Without Lucian, they are rotting away, just like the Emporium. It's not blood inside them, it's ink. Daniel pushed his palm against the cool glass of the window. Hot tears gathered in his eyes. Why was it that everything he loved or cared about or depended on went away in the end? What was wrong with him? Sharp said, I don't believe there's much time left. His big hands were pressed together like he was praying. We need to find Lucian now. Daniel shook his head. I've been thinking, Mr Silver has always done what's best for this place. Why would he stop now? If I'm right and he doesn't want to be found, then there must be a reason. I trust him. Do you trust him enough to die here if you're wrong, said Sharp. Look, Lucian is ill. You said so yourself. He might not be thinking clearly. He might have gone mad for all we know. If we don't find him, I promise you everything in this shop, including your friends, will be gone. And you're going to have to start thinking about life outside the Emporium again. Daniel stared desperately. I don't want to leave. Then help me. How? Sharp let out a deep sigh. I know Lucian better than anyone. I know how his mind works. Perhaps if I were to study the Book of Wonders, I might find something that you have missed. The tiniest clue can make all the difference. Daniel reached for his pocket. He brought the book out and stared at the battered cover. He was tired and frightened and confused. Could Sharp be right? Was it possible Mr Silver was losing his mind? It is your decision, said Sharp. If you do not wish me to have the book, I understand. He pointed to the gold watch on his wrist. But time is running out and consider this. How would you feel if the Emporium slipped away and you knew that you had done everything in your power to save it? And that you had not done everything in your power to save it, to save your friends? Daniel's hand trembled as he clutched the book. Sharp was right. How could he ignore any chance, no matter how small, of saving his home and the people who had filled his life with magic? He held out the Book of Wonders. Sharp stared at it. He licked his lips, reached out hungry fingers. Just like that, the Book of Wonders was gone, nestling in Sharp's hands. How can I help? Daniel asked. Sharp tore his eyes from the book. Um, uh, I insist on doing this alone, boy. I won't achieve much with you staring over my shoulder. Besides, you've been through quite an ordeal today. It's best if you rest. As Sharp spoke, Daniel's eyelids grew heavy and tiredness weighed upon his shoulders. You'll tell me if you find anything, he managed to say through a yawn as he slumped into a dusty old armchair near the window. Sharp flashed those white teeth. If I find what I'm looking for, boy, you will know about it, believe me. And with that, he turned and swept away through the curtain. Daniel watched after him. Somewhere in the back of his head, something was screaming out at him, but he did not care anymore. Tiredness around him suffocating the world, and he curled up in a deep chair and closed his eyes. Hmm. Chapter 25. The Nothingness. Daniel woke with a start. Several of the clocks on the wall displayed the date as well as the time, and they told him that he had slept an entire day. It was strange how tiredness had crept over him, just as he had given the book to Sharp. Daniel's hand touched the empty pocket. Daniel's hand touched the empty pocket. He thought of the book. Usually when he wished to find anything in the Emporium, an object or a place, he would simply hold a picture of it in his mind and he would know in an instant where it could be located. But now, when he pictured the Book of Wonders, he could see nothing. There was a blind spot in his vision, like static interference, and it was not being caused by the weakening Emporium. The only explanation was that Sharp was blocking him, purposely keeping him at arm's length. And why would he do that? What did he have to hide? Sharp had made everything seem so hopeless, made Daniel think handing over the Book of Wonders was the only option left. But now his head was clear, Daniel was starting to realise the enormity of his mistake. In a half a beat, he was through the curtain and right away it was obvious that something had changed. Looking at the decaying great hall of stairways was like visiting some ancient ruin or the site of a disaster. The stairs were broken, many of the flickering torches had died, casting the corridors in cold shadow and gloom. The air was tinged with the taste of smoke and thick dust and something sour and metallic. In the end, in the day, Daniel had been asleep, the Emporium's disease had progressed rapidly. 
A terrible thought knocked the wind from him. The Nowhere Hotel. Would it still be standing? Were his friends okay? Sprinting through the dark, Daniel found his path blocked time again by the debris, debris of collapsed corridors. A wonder called the shipwreck had burst open, flooding several passages with waist-deep water full of colourful fish. The door to the Nowhere Hotel was like many of the other wonders, cracked and warped. As soon as Daniel saw it, he knew something bad had happened inside. The revolving door, the revolving, revolving door deposited him in the lobby, which had been so vibrant and grand the last time he visited. Now it was silent. Lights flickered on and off and columns of black marble were crumbling. There were fissures in the floor and places where the ceiling had collapsed. Hello, said Daniel, flinching at the sound of his own voice. There was no answer. He did not want to go any further. He was scared, both of the lonely gloom and what might have happened to his friends. But his friends were exactly the reason he had to go on. Ellie lived in this place and it was impossible for her to escape. What if she was trapped somewhere? What if she was hurt? But where? Which room was hers? Where would he begin his search? Caleb's room, he said to himself. What number was it? What number? What number? What number? 108. It was 108. He ran to the elevator, punched the button. Nothing happened, of course. It isn't working, said Daniel to the Emporium. Why make things e easy for me? He kicked the wall and chunk, and a chunk of black marble broke off and thudded to his feet. The stairs were narrow and steep, all bare concrete and flickering strip lights. And as Daniel climbed floor after floor, the Nowhere Hotel creaked and groaned around him. He knew it would all fall apart at any moment, knew that this wonder would disappear from existence as easily as any of the others. But he pushed through the fear. When he reached the tenth floor, his legs and lungs were burning. Keep going, keep going. Through the door, he took a slow step forward and another, then he froze. A metre or two in front of him, where there should have been floor and walls, should have been the door to Caleb's room. Should have been something, anything. There was nothing. The walls came to a jagged stop, like some monster had bitten the corridor in half. The floor stopped suddenly, a lip of ragged black carpet and beyond, opening up in every direction, was a darkness that went on forever. Daniel stared into the black, saw no wreckage, no light, no sign that anything at all had ever existed. He imagined stepping off the edge, falling into that nothingness, tumbling forever, losing all memory, of who he was or how he'd been there until he became part of the nothing too part of the fabric of the darkness lost was caleb lost anya had the nothing swallowed ellie he tore one foot from the floor and stepped back a deep rumble filled the place like the breath of a sleeping giant a small section of wall a floor and wall broke off and spun away into the nothing as the world lurched violently forwards throwing daniel onto the carpet he landed with a thud knocking the wind from his body and rolled and skidded and bumped out of control towards the unimaginable fall. He threw out a desperate hand, his fingers found the ragged edge of the black carpet and he clung on and managed to stop himself going all the way over. His lower body was now hanging out over the edge of the abyss. His grip tightened desperately on the carpet but the weight of him was beginning to fray. The material and he watched in helpless horror as the carpet ripped slowly, slowly and finally snapped. He fell back with a sickening jerk. A hand, huge and warm, wrapped around his waist, hoisted him high. He was slung over his shoulder and he watched, blinking the sweat from his eyes as the remainder of the floor began breaking and crumbling like dry cake. I'm dead, he thought. The person who was carrying him leapt back just as the floor collapsed completely. And for a moment, Daniel felt like he was back in the leap of faith, soaring through the sky. Then they landed and rolled and tumbled and Daniel was flung against something hard and cold. Are you all right? Daniel rubbed his head and face. There was a smear of fresh blood on his hand. Standing over him, looking down with a concerned expression, was Caleb. They were back in the stairwell, but the nothing was spreading. The door to the tenth floor was being swallowed up, and the walls of the stairwell were already beginning to crack. Daniel threw his arms around Caleb. You saved my life, he said. Where is everyone? Is Ellie all right? Let's talk on the move, said Caleb. The further we are from the edge, the better. Daniel noticed Caleb flinch. As they descended the stairs, he seemed to be favouring one of his arms, holding it tight to his body. There was something else, something missing. Where's Mr Bobo? Daniel had never seen Caleb without his ragged, no-eyed teddy bear. Caleb's lip trembled. He didn't make it, he said in a low, sad voice. You saw my room, he's gone. Bobo was inside when it, when it was swallowed by the dark. He took a handkerchief from his pocket and blew his nose. When he lowered the hanky, a drop of ink trickled from his nostril. 
He wiped his nose with his hand and stared at the black smear on his skin. I suppose I should have expected it eventually, he said with a sad sigh. We're all just characters in Silver's book, and we'll fade to nothing without him. Just like the Emporium, half of us were wiped out when the hotel began to crumble. Most of the survivors are dying of illness. It seems I can now count myself in that category. Anya, said Daniel, did she make it? She survived, said Caleb. She is still recovering from her injuries. He smiled and placed a massive hand on Daniel's shoulder. I heard you saved her. Everyone knows Daniel Holmes and we thank you. We are in your debt forever. The way things are going, there won't be time for tomorrow. Never mind forever, said Daniel. Where's the rest of the staff? Silver made a hospital wing years ago, said Caleb, in case anything ever happened to his customers. It has never been used until now. Thankfully, it's still in one piece. For the moment, at least. He let out a wheeze, wiped inky blood from the corner of his mouth. He waved away Daniel's concerned look. There's nothing... There's nothing can be done for the ill. We can only make them as comfortable as possible. And Ellie said, Daniel, have you seen her? Caleb shook his head. Her search party was due to be the last back. They haven't returned yet. She's still out there. Daniel leaned against the wall and put his face in his hands. Caleb sighed. She's tough, he said. I'm sure she'll make it back. He paused to wipe his nose again and then went on. There is something I think you should know. Ellie doesn't have a condition. There's no magical disease that stops her from leaving the shop. It's Mr. Silver who's keeping her here. What? You mean she's his prisoner? He loves her very much, said Caleb, but he always says Ellie must stay for her own protection. He will not tell her exactly what she needs protecting from. Ellie thinks he is being selfish. She believes Mr. Silver keeps her in the shop because he doesn't want to be alone. So you can see why she's so desperate. Not only is her father missing, but he is the only one who can release her from the place, from this place. She is trapped in a crumbling tomb. They reached the lobby, the fire eater and the boy, and stood face to face at the exit. You're not carrying the book of wonder, said Caleb, indicating Daniel's empty inside pocket. I can sense when it's close by. It's the first time I've seen you without it since Silver disappeared. He began to cough wildly and leaned on the wall, wiping more inky, bu inky blood from his face. I have to go, said Daniel, worry swelling in his chest. He didn't dare confess that he'd given the book away. Try to look after the others and yourself. And if you see Ellie, please tell her I'm so sorry and I need her help. I'll see you soon. He turned away, wondering if he'd ever see the fire breather again and began to walk the lonely corridors in search of Vindictus Sharp and the Book of Wonders.